after studying this module, you shall be able to understand the difference between change and transition, different phases of transition, the concept of organizational life cycle, different stages of organizational life cycle. 1990s saw various changes in the organizational design philosophy, work structuring and management. Increasing customer centric environment is the primary reason for such change. Therefore, it has become necessary for the organizations to become flexible to be able to respond to the competitive and market changes. An organization faces various changes during its lifetime. The problem with the change is not the change, but the transitions involved with the change. As William Briggs put it in words, change can be most effectively dealt with by concentrating on where to put the focus. He also clarified the distinction between change and transition. He said change is situational, while transition is the psychological process people go through to come to terms with the new situation. Also, change is external, while transition is internal. Various significant differences between transition and change are overlooked when transition is considered to be a gradual or an unfinished change. When talking about change, focus is on the outcome that the change will bring. The starting point for a transition is different. It is the ending that is to be made to leave the old situation behind and not the outcome as in change. Psychological transition deals with letting go of the old reality and the identity that was there before the change took place. Failure to think about who will have to let go of what if the change occurs undermines the organizational change like no other thing. Even in the case of good changes, Transition occurs with having to let go of something. Failure in identifying the losses and being ready for the losses and ending then change brings is the largest problem that an organization in the phase of transition encounters. From an organizational point of view, change is a factual observation of difference in the form, quality or state over time. As per the organizational life cycle theory, change is imminent. A developing entity having a form, logic, a code that controls the change process and helps move an organization from a given point of departure to a subsequent end. The progression of change events follows a cumulative and conjective unitary sequence. The Bridges model of transition Organizations cannot just keep on replicating yesteryear's practices to prosper and to achieve success. Changing business conditions make old assumptions and practices non-applicable. There must be innovation which the leaders and their constituents need to introduce in the organization. Change is often viewed as a straightforward process where a task force needs to be established to lay out a plan of what is needed to be done, at what time and by whom. The organization is then left to implement the plan. Many a times, leaders think that to make change work, followers need to be shown an implicit plan of how to go from the current place to the place they intend to go. Most leaders take transition as automatic. It happens because the change is happening, but it doesn't. While talking of transitions, the issue of timing comes into existence as the transitions occur much slowly than the change. Brigitte's model of transitions. Organizations can't just keep on replicating yesteryear's practices to prosper and to achieve success. Changing business conditions make old assumptions and practices non-applicable. 
there must be innovation which the leaders and their constituents need to introduce in the organization. Change is often viewed as a straightforward process where a task force needs to be established to lay out a plan of what is needed to be done, at what time and by whom. The organization is then left to implement the plan. Many a times leaders think that to make change work, followers need to be shown an implicit plan of how to go from the current place to the place they intend to go. Most leaders take transition as automatic. It happens because the change is happening, but it doesn't. While talking of transitions, the issue of timing comes into existence as the transitions occur much slowly than the change, saying goodbye or endings. Firstly, people need to let go of the way the things and they used to be. It is difficult for people to let go of the way of engaging in and accomplishing the tasks that made them successful in the past. Even after letting go of their old ways, people find it difficult to start anew and then they enter into the second phase of transition, the neutral zone. The neutral zone, explorations. The neutral zone is the in-between stage that is full of uncertainty and confusions. This stage becomes particularly difficult during mergers or acquisitions when the career and the policy decisions are left swinging when the two leadership groups are working on the power questions. This is an uncomfortable zone with people struggling to get out of it. There are people who try to get rid of it by pushing themselves into a new situation while there are some who try to retreat into the past. If the transition is not dealt with at this stage, the change might collapse. Moving forward, the new beginning. Some people fail to get through transition because they are unable to make an ending. Others fail because they are frightened and confused by the neutral zone and are therefore unable to stand in it for long. The others who are able to sail through the first two stages face the third stage of new beginning which requires them to begin behaving in a new way which might put their sense of competence and value at risk. The organizations having a history of punishing mistakes see people hanging back during the last phase of transition because there, people want to see how others would handle the new beginning. The higher a leader sits in the organization, the more quickly he tends to move through the change process as he can see the intended destinations much before the others come to know about the existence of the race. In today's organizations, a leader can't be effective if he has not experienced and successfully managed a transition. Now we will discuss organizational life cycle. An organization is a man-made social structure to bolster the collaborative pursuit of specified goals. It defines objectives and motivates its workforce to contribute towards the achievement of these set goals. It has an inherent structure formalizing it to respond to external and internal stimulus in a planned way to produce intended result. However, changing circumstances might produce unintended results. Organizations pass through foreseeable growth and development patterns. With growth, a change is experienced in its focus, priorities, concern, problems, and complexity. During its course of existence, an organization passes through various stages. These stages form the organizational life cycle. 
Discussions on organization cycle have taken place in diverse disciplines like management, education, marketing, psychology, sociology, and public administration since its inception in 1950. This idea of organizational life cycle was first introduced by Kenneth Boulding. It examines the effects of time and change on our organization. A series of evolutionary growth phases, life cycle necessitates revolutionary growth of the organization and the people associated with it. Taking the concept from biological sciences, various researchers have proposed the different cycles of organizations or organizational life cycle from birth to death. However, models of different researchers differ in the number of stages of life cycle. Though generally, different models of organizational development postulate common sequence or sequences, with some of these also include the decline cycle. Each scholar considered the organizational development stages from a specific perspective, considering different organizational characteristics. Models of organizational life cycle development Different organizational models emphasize on different factors, explaining the changing characteristics of organizations. Nine models of organizational development consisting of various stages. Downs model, Lippitt and Smith's model, Scott's model, Grunner's model, Torbert's model, Leiden's model, Katz and Kahan's model, Adisha's model, and Kimberley's model. Let us study each one in detail. Downs model. In his model, Downs focused on the life cycles of government bureaus. He suggested three main stages of growth and development for these organizations. The first stage is defined as struggle for autonomy, in which the organization attempts to obtain legitimacy and resources from the environment to achieve survival. The second stage of rapid growth is characterized by rapid expansion and emphasis on creativity and innovation. The final stage of deceleration includes elaboration and formalization of rules and regulations and emphasis on predictability and coordination. 5.2 Lippitt and Smith's model. It is one of the earliest developed model of life cycles in the private sector. This model suggests three stages of organizational development, birth, youth, and maturity. The birth stage signifies creation of an operating system and becoming a viable organization. The development stage typifies development of stability and reputation. The maturity stage talks about achievement of uniqueness and adaptability along with domain expansion. This model talks about six major managerial concerns through which an organization passes from stage to stage. A Scott's model. This model is based on the work of Schindler. A Scott's model propounds the progress of a firm from one man show to formal bureaucracies and then finally to diversified conglomerates. Thus, it identifies three different types of forms that follow a historical sequence. Grinner's model. Grinner's model talks about five different and sequential stages, moving from emphasis on creativity and entrepreneurship to formalization to adaptability and flexibility. Additionally, he propounded that each stage is followed by a transitional phase arising from a major organizational problem. An organization advances to a mature stage only when it is successful in overcoming the crisis of the current stage. The different crises which an organization stages through its five stages of creativity growth through direction, growth 
through delegation, growth through coordination, and growth through a collaboration are crisis of leadership, crisis of autonomy, crisis of control, crisis of red tape, and crisis of information overload and psychological saturation respectively. But Greiner in his model does not specify the resolution for the crisis mentioned in the fifth stage. Taubert's model. Taubert's model moved from the stages of individuality, informality and diffusion to group unity. After that, fixed rules and structures are followed till the time renewal ability and adaptability occur in the organization. His model is primarily based on the individual mentalities of the members of the organizations. As per this model, an organization progresses through different stages when its members through their experience and development of personal and interpersonal effectiveness become aware about the causal factors and dynamics operating in the organizations. The process through which the organization progresses from one stage to another is not specified in the model. Instead, there is mention of successfully higher levels of organizational functioning attained by an organization. Linden's model. <clears throat> Linden suggested four different stages in his model of organizational life cycle. This model is based on the functional problems of the organization as suggested by Parson. It suggests putting emphasis on different functional problems at different stages, environmental adaptation, resource acquisition, goal attainment, and pattern maintenance. The first focus for an organization is to adapt and develop a niche in the external environment. Second, to emphasize on resource acquisition and development of workflow procedures. Third is to emphasize on goal attainment and efficient production of output. And the fourth and the last focus for is to emphasize on pattern maintenance and the institutionalization of a structure of the organization. In brief, as per this model, pattern of development moves from innovation emphasis and niche generation to stability and institutionalization. Katz and Kahan's model. This model propounds three stages of organizational life cycle based on the amplification of organizational structure that evolve over time. The first stage of primitive system is characterized by the fundamentals of the productive system based on the cooperative efforts of organizational members. The second stage of stable organization focuses on coordination and behavior control. It is characterized by the development of an authority and maintenance system to regulate the organizational activities. The final stage of elaboration of structure is typified by the establishment of adaptive mechanisms for dealing with the external environment. Adige's model. Adige's model of organizational life cycle is the only model that discusses about both the maturing and the declining stages. This model suggests that an organization develops through stages from infancy to maturity and decline through various stages from maturity to death. This development and decline is dependent on the emphasis placed on four different activities, namely producing results, acting entrepreneurially, administering formal rules and procedures, and integrating individuals to the organizations. As per this model, an organization starts with an emphasis on entrepreneurial activity 
which is later coupled with an emphasis on producing results. Formalization of activities and integration becomes important while approaching maturity. The decline of an organization takes place mainly because of an overemphasis on stability, administration, and rules and procedures. Kimberley's model. Kimberley, in his model of organizational life cycle, talks about four different stages. As suggested by him, the first stage occurs before the actual formation of an organization. It includes assembling the resources and forming an ideology. The second stage in the organizational life cycle involves the selection of a prime mover, hiring of the workforce, and establishment of support from strategic constituencies. The third stage consists of forming an organizational activity, infusion of high emotional and physical investment by the members associated with the organization and, committed and commitment through members for the achievement of the basic mission of the organization. The fourth and the last stage of institutionalization occurs with the rigidity of the rules and policies, formalization of a structure and conservativeness and predictability of the organization in responding to the pressures of the external environment. Integration of organizational life cycle model. Every model consists of an entrepreneurial stage, niche creation, creativity, a collective stage, which is commitment, formalization and control stage, which is stability and institutionalization, and a structure elaboration and adaptation stage. Though there exists some dissimilarity in the models, some researchers divide the four primary stages into sub-stages, a DJ. Some ignore either the first or the last stage, Karts and Khan and Kimberly, Adibe, Adige, as a group, a consensus seems to exist among them. Except for the Adige's model, none of the models talk about the organizational decline and death. The reason for this might be that in mature and elaborate organizations, the life cycle model breaks down with the occurrence of unpredictable changes. The only predictable stages might be from birth to maturity. A uniform pattern of organizational development takes place over time along with non-identical patterns of organizational activities and structures taking place in different stages of organizational life cycles. Stages of organizational life cycle. On the basis of the different stages mentioned in the organizational life cycle models discussed above, a basic model of the organizational life cycle is set to consist of the following five stages. Development, introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. An organization develops through these stages in the following way. Development. Every organization is conceptualized as someone's vision. In the first stage of development, the organization is yet not born. Instead, it is just an idea. An opportunity or a need is identified and an initial discussion and brainstorming is done regarding the feasibility of the idea. The advocates of the idea and the new organization try to convince themselves and others regarding the merit of the idea. The two important things at this stage of organizational development are courage and commitment. Courage to take up the idea and commitment to work towards the development of the idea by converting it, it into a reality. Introduction. At the second stage of the organizational life cycle, an organization is introduced born. The idea becomes reality at this stage and it now requires time, resources and commitment. 
Every new day comes with a challenge at this stage, emphasizing on making things happen and producing results. The founder or the entrepreneur is the driving force in the organization. Dedication, energy and hard work is needed to keep the organization alive and productive. The most appropriate managerial approach at this stage is that of entrepreneurial, i.e. total involvement in all the spheres of organizational activity. Growth The organization at this stage learns to produce results. It is encouraged by its success and it starts expanding its vision, getting hold of available opportunities from every corner. The organization becomes optimistic at this stage as it develops pride in its growth, pupil and size. Nothing seems out of reach and it is dominated by its dedicated and enthusiastic leaders. After a course of time, the expansion brings risk. Too many promises are made putting the organization in danger. Generally, this is a tough time for the organizations and its leaders. But if these issues and challenges are met, the organization prospers. If the organization succeeds in meeting the challenges at this stage, it achieves total quality in terms of service to its customers satisfaction to its employees and the ability to achieve desired results. It has a clearly defined mission and strategy. It keeps on improving its processes and sets and meets aggressive goals. Delegation of work is the most appropriate managerial approach as management or delegation of work is the most appropriate managerial approach as entrepreneurs' involvement in each stage might not be possible. Maturity An organization begins to age when it ceases to stretch for excellence. The leaders of the organization slow down at this stage, settle in and become comfortable. Growth and improvement aspirations start fading and changes become slight and take place over a considerable period of time. It is also defined as a phase of transition from growing to aging. The organization, however, is still profitable and might appear as an industry leader. Though the focus changes from what we do to how we do things. It no longer concentrates on what it wants but accepts what it gets. Decentralization of work might be the most appropriate approach at this stage as it will enhance independence and thereby efficiency can be enhanced through specialization of organizational subsystem. The decline. The organizations lose energy as the drive to produce desired results reduces and it becomes more concerned about its forms and functions. If it doesn't make any efforts to re-energize itself, it declines. More emphasis is put on problems and the people causing such problems rather than thinking of their solutions. Service levels falls and customers start complaining. If no immediate action is taken to turn the organization around, the organization ends up by self-destructing itself. At this stage, a turnaround or more aggressive approach through external support may bring back the organization or organizational position on the track. Knowing where the organization is in its life cycle helps it to understand the problems it is facing and finding solutions to them. The organization can set priorities for problem solving and introduction of changes. It becomes easier for it to identify where it is 
and the challenges it might face in the future. Various organizations use life cycle assessments to mark progress, set priorities, and manage their drive to the maturity stage. Summarizing the module, we can say that transition is the psychological process people go through to come to terms with the new situation. Organizations can't keep on replicating old practices. Each stage in the organizational life cycle is a cluster of various attributes and configurations. Every organization passes through different stages during, during its life and its success depends on how well it survives the current stage.